Yeah, both of you. <laughs> Hi. So I'm not even sure if it was 2014 already, but if it was, then it was very early January that we met uh, at the Kenyan headquarters in Koblenz was sort of meant to meet the team and the people behind the bikes and see the bike in real life and see what happens. And I just, I will never forget, Wolfi was excited like a little kid because he already had 28,000 ideas up front and a new bike in the back of his head. And he's like, can I show him? Can I show him? Can I show him? And everybody just wanted to show me the bike that's there as it is and all these kind of things. And um, it wasn't even, you know, I wasn't even a part of the team yet. Um, but the, this passionate moment is something I'll never forget. I, I also remember that day like it was yesterday. <laughs> you know, this big uh, meeting was prepared with Roman, the boss of the company, the CTO and many other people and everybody was a little bit nervous, even the lady on the front desk like, oh, Jan Fudeno is coming, so we were super excited about everything. And yeah, yeah, I definitely wanted to show the bike because I thought it was the best Thing to convince you to sign this contract. Yeah, I think it's, you, it's, it's, it's probably your passion that sold me more than anything else and how everybody had to hold you back. It's, no, 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 we haven't. Uh, don't say anything yet. So probably, yeah, more than the bike, which is something, you know, in the beginning you see it, but as for me, like I, I see it and I like it or, or, or whatever, but I can't feel the speed that it will give me, which in the end is important. But I could feel the passion and it told me that if there is something we wanted to do, uh, you would turn heaven and earth to make it happen. R40-16 yeah. said it was supposed to be launched in 2016. And for me, that was a dream project from the first sketch to start of production, start of sales. In engineering, you always feel that if some things are too complicated, you are not at the goal and then you develop, work on it, work on it and suddenly it gets easy and then you know you're there. And this project was like more or less easy from the first moment on. That was really exciting for us. The designers just put the side view on it and we said, oh wow, nice. It, look, it, it looks good, we put this there, we put that there, we put a bottle on front and <laughs> that's it. You know, and then we worked it out the plan. Yeah, we did. And that bottle stayed on for all of about 40 seconds when I tested it the first time until it broke off and the, the rear bottle cage. And then, where was it? Frankfurt? I don't know. It, it stood longer than 40 seconds in Frankfurt. But yeah, in, in, in Frankfurt, it stood, it stood the first lap, first one in Girona. And at the time, I lived on these cobblestones. Mm, yeah. And I went down the cobblestone street and just at the end of the cobblestone street, this prototype broke off the front and, you know, it was at the time, like we thought, oh my God, it's so cool. You've got a prototype. No one else has got it. And yeah, there's a lot of energy and, and, and gray hairs that go into a project like that because everybody was so invested in that project. And, you know, I'd gone out with my big mouth and said, look here, 2015, I want to be gone. I want to do it. And then for it to actually work, you know, it was the first year that, um, that I, I rode a canyon. You know, it was kind of the dream start and that's really how, how everything came together. I, I remember the, the slogan, uh, sw was it Swim, Frodo, Run, I think. Um, After Frankfurt, yeah. where we had the new bike record there. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was just a, it was a magical time because everything came together, you know, the bottle and all the little hiccups were just, they were gone because we'd worked hard and in between the times, or rather you'd worked hard on the bike and I'd worked hard on the, on the shape and it was really cool because everybody was there um, and I think, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was an all round pretty emotional emotional time you know the first one is always is always that special one mm. yeah surreal to think that it's already eight years ago i'm not sure if you can imagine how much this is pushing the engineering team as well so like the athletes as well i as an engineer I try to visualize this big goal as well so during my bike rides i very often heard this sound like, yeah, I'm Frodeno, you are an Ironman world champion. I wrote freehand, I said, wow, yeah. And this is pushing the whole team. Like, <laughs> Naturally, I'm not a great bike rider. Like I have to work and fight for every watt that I find on the bike, that I find on my legs, that I find in my shape. And to know that I have 
the very best bike is something that for me helped me tremendously because despite what you know what goes out and when you have the pre-race game face and and all these kind of things like it's pretty nerve-wracking like the whole time when you're there and, and being nervous and preparing and wondering if it's enough and having all these questions at least for me to know that when I get on that bike that's the best possible setup it's it really is like a you know a rock in the rough seas that also helps me actually live out my love for cycling despite not being the most talented bike rider I, I have a strange passion for it. I just love it I love riding bikes <laughs> And to know that I'm riding the best is, yeah, is very comforting. I think we never talked about that, but we talked about Canyon internally about how much is this worth. For example, uh, Roth 16, where you wanted to do the uh, world record time and we made a special project around it. So you also ask yourself, how much is this really worth? Is this worth the effort? Knowing that our guys have the best material on T1 is important for us and I, I guess also uh, for you and maybe that's why we plan the big projects around the big races as well. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it's like with any high stake sports kind of project, probably not even just limited to sports, if you count the hours and you work out how much effort and time goes into something, it's, it's difficult to quantify. But if you're trying to get from 99 to 99.5 percent the increase in time and energy and brain man power is incredible yeah. like it's just humongous you don't shy away when i say when when i say okay let's go for a world record you're like okay let's <laughs> let's think about this let's do it you know whereas yeah. a lot of people are like now that's just you know it's crazy why would you so the goal was always clear you yeah. that yeah. that that was something and the goal is the base to get running. Yeah, of course. I think that. To get the best athlete of the world is your goal. To get triathlon number one brand was our goal. To get there, you, you have to have the end in, in mind. Was this Frankfurt 2019 when we met the break cover and bottle in one piece? Yeah, yeah. Oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> that was the race I waited for Patrick. But, but technology-wise, Jan came back from a sub co-sponsor aerodynamic guy who's very good in, uh, in, in automotive industry and we said okay what can we improve what did the guy say what can we improve on the bike and he said yeah try to get less gaps less separations on the front and we printed the bottle and the brake cover in one piece and I told you take care there's not this super soft area anymore which helps you break so I said, I definitely told you that. I said, do a careful test ride before the race. And yeah, we ended up in the green area. Yeah, so the funny thing is the old bike basically on the fork with the brake calipers, it had, a, it had an elastic piece that allowed the brake calipers to come out slightly when you pull the brakes in order to create more pressure. But because we'd made this from one piece in plastic, the resistance now was not against a piece of rubber, but it was against a piece of plastic. And so it felt like I was applying the right amount of pressure, but in fact, uh, it, it, was, it was almost no pressure because it was pushing against the plastic piece and not against the rim at the time. And um, I think there's some, ev some filming that was going somewhere, I don't know, between 80 and 90 Ks an hour. And I start pulling the brakes and nothing happens. <laughs> And I start putting the brakes a little bit more and my rear wheel starts skidding, which is a slightly uncomfortable feeling when you're going 80 k's an hour. And I realized like this turn is coming in and it was a right hand turn off the descent onto a kind of a long sweeping left hander. And uh, like always on the descents, I like to go full risk. And I realized this wasn't going to end well. Um, but luckily the other piece of innovation that had come in this race was the first time that we rode tubular tires mm -hmm. so it was there was no tube there was no latex and it was um, um, tubeless tires not tubular sorry tubeless tires and 
That allowed me with my extremely explosive power, which allows me to jump about that high, on a curb that was about that high. <laughs> and well, my rear wheel may have gotten caught and bottles went flying and I went straight into the green, but somehow managed to save it. And luckily, because that impact um, hit the tubeless tire, the, there was no puncture, there was no pinching or anything, and I could, you know, kind of go off the green and back onto the course and had some adrenaline to fuel me for the rest of the race. <laughs> hey, and the front bottle, it held. It, it was still there, so everything in the end, it worked out. But it was the only bottle that held. <laughs> the That's true, yeah, everything else fell off. Yeah. We lost everything else, yeah. Some ideas don't work at all, and I always try it by myself before. You would only find the edge together, I would say, by trying things out, failing sometimes, uh, getting closer and closer and closer. It's only possible with feedback and constant back and forth. Yeah, the new bike, um, it took us three and a half years to develop that. And the wind tunnel appointment with Jan was, for me, it was the last step. And uh, my reaction to myself was somehow unexpected. I never had something like that before, but then a week later, I tried to explain it by myself and to myself and I just tried to find a picture and said okay if you go to a shop and buy a puzzle with one million pieces and you know you have to puzzle every day 10 hours in and the weekends and so on and the moment you put in the last piece to its place and you don't get emotional you should not buy a puzzle again <laughs> and <laughs> I want to keep on puzzling it was the moment where we closed this project successfully. So three and a half years hard work. I'm not sure if you would uh, tell the outside world that German, uh, German engineers get emotional, they would believe you. But <laughs> I think that's what, what, uh, what makes you. And I remember the test, it was, uh, it was quite something because for me it was such a, cha such a change, mainly optically, uh, with the disc brakes and you know, I, was, I was against it for a long time. Um, and then seeing it all come to fruition and the wind tunnel test is one thing because you know as an athlete you see the numbers but they're not tangible there's not something that that you feel but I remember the first ride I had on it uh, when you had a bit of a test camp in Girona and realizing just just how incredibly good the bike felt to ride and how well it handled I mean, that's, that for me, as somebody who loves riding a bike, you know, going in a straight line is the most boring thing you could possibly do, you know, trying to get fast, okay, yeah, that's all great, but the handling and the ability to corner well and, you know, the, the feel of the bike, that, that to me was the, the probably the most mind-blowing bit. Yeah, and to feel the disc brakes, maybe. Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah, the disc brakes would have probably saved me a couple of times if I had them earlier, if I could have braked into a corner a little bit sooner and not had one of my stupid crashes. Hey, Wolfie, I don't need disc brakes. Let's keep it simple. The rim brakes work well. Yeah. And then one ride and all doubts were gone, right? I think my first race on that bike was in Gran Canaria. Um, half distance and I remember Boris Stein beat me by one week he raced somewhere else at the time to have the first victory on that bike um, <laughs> which I, which at the time I, I'll be honest I wasn't happy about <laughs> I wanted to have the first victory on this bike but um, yeah the the winning streak continued and there wasn't much racing but uh, definitely yeah for the little for the little we did we we had some good times in the tri battle. I mean, that was everything kind of maximized, wasn't it? Where we looked at road surfaces still and tried to play with various pressures. And it was definitely, again, one of those like complete team efforts where we tried to just fine tune every little bit. And then it just rained yeah. all day. <laughs> it was just like, what do we do now? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it came off and it came, came good. But yeah, that was. My first time riding under four hours, actually. Yeah, that was, that was this day. For me, the most exciting was the whole project. And also for Felix, like, how can one guy organize such an event by himself? I mean, we blocked a big, big street for 
five or six hours and to see this effort we made this how do you say it this car oh, the the the, cur the turn the the steep turn yeah the track style turn yeah oh god which was a huge process well lionel almost went off the top remember on the first time she almost she almost went straight by straight for the stars it. by testing it <laughs> and on the race he was very very careful on that one and then for me a highlight regarding tri battle was the party after the race <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was uh there were so many moving pieces and like you said yeah i think that's where felix may have lost a year or two of his life uh, in terms of stress and gray hair but yeah that's again it's that unfathomable and also unmeasurable level of effort you yeah. know, when do you say is it worth it and when do you realize well this is yeah it, it's absolutely nuts the kind of effort that has to go in but if you're looking for the limits then under those circumstances especially um, what it takes how good can we prepare this race because it's a once in a lifetime chance when the world championships is moving away from Kona to Nice, completely different cost profile. So we ask ourselves, what can we do as a bike company to prepare this race as good as possible? And we made uh, brainstorming sessions where we put crazy ideas together and then discussed it with the athletes. And we ended up by um, digitalizing the course, writing a special software to see the performance of different types of bikes. And then we organized a, a ride camp for our best athletes to really try all the details around the bike for this specific course. And yeah, we, we are just fine tuning this plan right now and finalizing it. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, it's, yeah, we, we coined the term only yesterday the moonshot project because I, I mean I have to be very honest like this is probably my biggest challenge yet as an athlete in terms of the course and changing myself as an athlete um, yeah at, at the very final stage of my career and diving into something completely unknown that's quite daunting at times because you know my training partner now, he's about 60 kilos and he can show me how fast you can ride a climb and <laughs> I'm not riding it as fast as him, but it's very different when you do it in a triathlon, you know, when you have to swim 3.8 k's before and the course does offer some classic time trialing and I think we've, we've struck a really good balance. Um, I'm certainly grateful that you managed to save quite a few grams on the bike without going super radical and starting to drill holes into pieces you know just um, yeah for me of course uh, doing my last my last championship race on a bike like that is it's important to me because it's part of the journey and it's it's been there for such a long time and exciting at the same time to have to reinvent and find a challenge this late on you know it's not schema f as we call it in German it's not just the standard it's not just let's repeat what we do and try and make it a little bit different no it's i mean we are filming this in andorra where you know basically the mountains are there every single day just to get ready for this one race and to have the bike that you know has has helped me to so much um and actually take it to its full potential because let's be honest a course like conan is very demanding aerodynamically mm but technically not at all. And I think this course will actually also bring to the forefront just how good and how much better this bike is technically because it handles, well, for me, better than, than a road bike. Mm. So that could be quite crucial on the descent. Let's just hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> for me, we've already talked about the moment, but the moment we met for me will always be the one where I'm like, who's this crazy dude who just loves the bike so much and he's got so much passion and, yeah, the, you know, success comes and goes, but um, it was just such a defining moment. I mean, close second will always be 2019, which felt like the, the perfect race. But uh, I think the moment we met is the one for me. <laughs> 2019 is the one I will always remember. You raced on the special cockpit, uh, 
going up on the, I say, oh. Of but course, I got out the saddle. Yeah. Out of the saddle and still in position. To summarize the past 12 years, just can't say nothing like thank you for picking us up into your rocket and flying us to planet Frodissimo. <laughs> well, nothing. thanks for building me a rocket because <laughs> otherwise I would have been quite screwed. <laughs> Thanks for the good times. Let's uh, let's ride some more. Maybe uh, a bit more gravel orientated or a bit more a uh, bit more relaxed. But I'm looking forward to yeah enjoying watching the next generation on our bikes and actually sharing that beer. <laughs>